All right. And there you have it. WineCellarMedia.com. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, trigger warnings and all that. It's uh, looks like it's 6.13 <coughs> p.m. And it's uh, February 25th as we get to recording this. Mm-hmm. Run the old decibels up there. And it is a, uh, a leap year, Olympics year, election year. So there will be a throw another day on the old February there. All right, you got one extra day of uh, back going in the Negro Time Machine month. Negro Time Machine month. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm gonna keep on making sense. Okay. All right. Ne- yeah. <laughs> got an extra day of Negro Time Machine month. Um, interesting coverage out of uh, Chicago. Yes. Coming up right here. Chinatown restaurants that have been hurt by fears of the coronavirus. Business is down, so tonight, a call for food lovers to come out and sample the cuisine in Chinatown. Yeah, that's going on out there in um, Chicago, yeah. out in um, Illinois. We're not participating. I don't, uh, I'm not uh, pubish. It's a pub crawl is what they call oh. it. I mean, technically, it's a restaurant crawl, but I'm sure they'll be stopping at bars and drinking at the restaurants, too. But no, more so, it's a, I just don't really want to go eat in Chinatown. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, I, oh, it's a bad area? No, the area is perfectly fine, but there's that um, that lateral racism stuff. Like, if you want to get followed around a store, <laughs> oh, okay, be black in Chinatown. So, you know. Yes. Yeah, I can't go. But I will... Uh, probably order from the local Chinese place where they know me and they're very nice. Oh, I'm just going to cook the chicken I have <laughs> and eat it. You have the most boring diet. Gotta say. It pretty good. Chicken thighs, broccoli, and cauliflower. Yes. Yes. And spinach. And spinach. There's chickpeas, uh, steak sometimes, burgers. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm finishing up the white meat chicken. Yes. Yeah. So you said chicken thighs. Wow. Yeah. So chicken breast and chicken thighs. Look at you diversifying. Yes. Your plate. But yeah, I think that's a uh, <coughs> that's uh coming from Chelsea Springlar. Yes. And then um, <coughs> my attention got caught to uh, I think this I I may have gotten this from the page that um that Dr. Mo. Uh, suggested subscribing to mm-hmm. and it's um and I think I got this I think I got this news from there I gotta go back and see what um see that page again I have it set to my C first it's uh so this is abc.net.au so they're covering out there in Australia uh, the journalist is uh, Brianna Shepard and they say um the WARSL backs down over ban on an aboriginal flag after public backlash Okay. This is a this is a follow up link. The one I got was when they were saying we gonna ban them. Mm. So they run it back for you a little bit, and they have a so they're saying back on Friday. Uh, so this was last week. It was revealed that the RSLWA. I don't know what that stands for. What the oh it, no, I don't see anything indicating the uh, what it stands <coughs> for. But it says um. They introduced a ban in response to some members taking issue with the ode of the remembrance being translated and delivered in Noongar. Ah, must be language. Mm -hmm. In Noongar at last year's Anzac Dawn Service in uh, Fremantle. And the veterans organization said at the time it did not support the performance at the cer- of the uh, of the ceremonies at any sites which commemorated those who had died during the war. So they're saying none of your colored folk shit here. Right. Don't come here doing your whoop de boopy dances. Mm. I know I know black racism <coughs> out here. I don't know how they articulate the racism out there. Yeah, I don't know. And I doubt that there's anyone that's like progressive that wants to repeat those sentences. No, to no. Be like, to give an example. But maybe you know a video clip. Hmm. Hey, you, you. Well, whatever. Who's that one fucking parliament person? It's a redheaded woman. And oh, she, I think like, we've played wore, her before. Yeah, she, I'm sure she's got it down. Whatever the fuck it is out there. She was the one. Uh, she showed up in a like a hijab, a, a hijab yeah. and it was like, I think it was a niqab, wasn't it? Niqab. 
where she had her, I think she like, had her whole like, face covered. Yeah, so it was, yeah, whoever, Pauline something, I think. Johnson, maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so however Pauline says it, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's how they get down with the racism out there. Ugh. And yes, I will um, link to this. <coughs> I think it is enter and esting, dear friend. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, yeah, um, old uh, Chris Matthews there. Oh God, did he apologize finally? Before getting into the night's news, I want to say something quite important and personal. As I watched the one-sided results of Saturday's Democratic caucus in Nevada, I reached for an historical. This one-sided results. They were one-sided. Well, there can be only one winner. That's how winning works. No, that's, but see, that's not how you win. So is this what they want? So they want fucking uh, the trophy culture? Everybody part- everybody gets a participation trophy? Is that what they're trying to do here? You don't win by winning, Phoenix. You don't win by winning. You win by losing. Yes, because that, that creates a story. Uh-huh. Right? You have to have a story. A story. Of a scrappy woman. Uh-huh. Tricked into being a Republican well into her 40s. Tricked into being a Republican, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Fooled. Mm-hmm. All right. Saw the error. Went and linked up with Hillary Clinton for a positive influence. <laughs> and then came out squabbling for a Senate seat. Remember during the... Uh, yes. Back in the... I mean, there were, there were videos of, of this scrappy individual. <laughs> Gonna overuse that word. In living rooms, I was like, "Hey, I like this motherfucker." Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is we the all shit. liked her back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was popping. It was like if I lived in that state, I would like to vote for that. Like I, I voted for Alan Grace, and I enjoyed that vote. Hmm. I would have liked to vote for Warren. Yeah, but then Bernie, Bernie showed up and told her, "Nah, <laughs> listen here, toots." Really, that's how that's what Bernie said. They're not gonna throw a skirt in the office. They're not going to throw a skirt in the office. All right. Not in the main seat. No. We plant man cheeks there. That's how Bernie talks. Man cheeks. All right. And then the Bernie bros. Yes. Katie Halper. Yes. Bernie bro. Yes. Notorious. Notorious. Uh, Brianna Joy Gray. Yes. Nina Turner. Bernie bros. Bernie bros. Susan Sarandon. They came out in support of the Jew. They did. And not the woman of color. She had yeah. a purple jacket on. <laughs> woman of color. Mm-hmm. Look at her blazers. Okay. Elizabeth I think she had on a, a, a proper ice blue one in one of those debates. She did. Yeah. Woman of color. Mm-hmm. See? Mm-hmm. And if you think, like, those base colors that she wears... Remember the Carl Kanai clothing band, Cross Colors? Yes. Cross, like intersect. Oh, you saw that headline too. Elizabeth Warren is white, native. She's American. She's a Republican, a Democrat, a progressive. So you did see the headline? No, I did not. Uh, the, I believe it was The Nation wrote an article, and the headline is um, Elizabeth Warren is the first intersectional uh, presidential candidate we've ever had. I mean, fuck Jesse Jackson, really. I mean, also maybe um, uh, fuck Shirley. Yeah, out of Texas, right? mm, And, you know, just, you know. Well, Shirley Chisholm was just black. (laughs) She was just black. Black people don't even have a gender, really. (laughs) It's just... Uh Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren, she... uh, what, what, what else did she have? What? She was a college student? College that was, student. That a, prof- was, a teacher? Te- that's an intersection. Parent. Parent? Mm-hmm. Huh? Lied about all those things? Whoa. Didn't know that part. Oh, lied about getting fired from her teaching job? Jesus Christ. She said something I cannot like... keep up with you Bernie <laughs> bros and your facts. She said something <laughs> like, she, like they didn't renew her contract because she was pregnant. Or had kids, and they were like, that's not actually how it went down at all. <laughs> so, yeah. What? Yeah. I, I can find it if you want. Okay, but you see, now, she's a person who did that, <laughs> but she's also a person uh-huh. who did other stuff as well, uh-huh. which those are also intersecting. Right. You see, so, 
you're gonna stop hating. But this is about yeah. But so mm -hmm. Chris Matthews does not like this one-sided mm -hmm. thing, but he is apologizing right now. It's Democratic caucus in Nevada. I reached for an historical analogy and used a bad one. You gotta like how he articulated that. I reached for a historical analogy and used a bad one. I mean, you said they were Nazis marching on France. Like, that's... That's All what right. Bernie Bros do. Jesu Sanders. Je suis Sanders? Just oh, I can't... I Je suis. <laughs> I don't talk France good. It's France. You'd never say all the letters. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And yes, that is what she said. She said she was fired because she was pregnant and they would not renew her contract, but that's not why. They did not renew her contract, so. Yeah. Okay, but, you know, she got mm -hmm. the story out there. <laughs> right. So now when someone who that really happened to, they can be like, <laughs> Oh, we're all to, and then more folks, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, that's Elizabeth Warren looking out yeah. for other people. Right, right. As per casual. Uh-huh. All right. Chris Matthews is a... Fucking Chris Matthews. Uh, uh, what is it? Because uh, his fucking, gi that giant melon on his shoulders. Nicole Ugh. Sandler calls him Tweety Bird. I mean, I can see it. Historical analogy. And used a bad one. I was wrong to refer to an event from the last days, or actually the first days of World War II. Mm -hmm. Senator Sanders, I'm sorry for comparing anything from that tragic era in which so many suffered, especially the Jewish people, to an electoral result. Of especially. He had, to, he had to take a breath on that one. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, it's wild to me how much anti-Semitism there is at the Bernie Sanders campaign. Like, I, Okay. <laughs> Like, just for a friendly reminder, Jews, y'all aren't as white as y'all fucking think you are. <laughs> you know what? Bring on an expert, and let's look at how this Jew gesticulates. <laughs> Seriously. And then, and then you look at it, and see, I'm, I'm not a hotep, folks. I just, I'm a guy with a microphone doing a podcast. But Trayvon Martin. Yeah. When uh, George Zimmerman said fucking coons. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they brought on an audio expert. To yeah. exonerate him from that. Yeah. And it's like, that's when they're, when they're coming down on you, it's like, oh, my black experience understands what they're doing to, 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 the, yes. to comrade Jew over here. It, seriously, <laughs> though. Because that shit is what, because didn't his, he had family members who died in the Holocaust, right? Yes. And then they came over here basically as refugees, and it's like, you fucking calling his supporters brown shirts, fucking saying it's like Nazis marching on France. The fucking, um, every picture of him is like rubbing his hands like the money grubbing Jew picture. Like, yeah. APAC, saying he's a uh, fake Jew because he doesn't support APAC, which is hosting an actual fucking like right wing neo Nazi who denies genocide. But that's a whole other thing. Um, and they call us that like just dead over the grave a Heather Heyer. Just yeah. Right over like someone killed by Nazis. Yeah. I guess you know what? When you drive a car into a crowd, that's murder. It is murder. That was a bit on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's just wild how much uh, anti-Semitism there is. But then they're calling Bernie an anti-Semite. And it's like, uh, hmm. Okay. Those, they're, they're, and they're just doing it. And it's like, dude, Gen Z can hear you. Right. Like, we could see this happening in real time. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. Like, come on. Yeah, this isn't like this shit where fucking where Chris Matthews was talking about George Bush's flight suit and... And Jimmy Dore had to go fucking, like, dig in the archives to dig it up. Like, no, the shit's being archived now. Like, right. this clip <laughs> is on Crooks and Liars right now. But Crooks and Liars is partisan bias. And they actually think this video's flattering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why they posted it. He like, apologized. <laughs> like, I think they, um... What they they put something like a, like a sub headline for it? <laughs> oh man, it, it's cute. Hey look, hey look, Dims can work the refs too. Okay. So they can Dims can ref. Th this is Dims refereeing themselves. <laughs> Dude, this is what and that's and you want to know who these folks are? We we've critiqued them before. Um, blue uh blue gal and drift glass are the professional left podcast. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, Dr uh blue gal who um her most recent just uh. You know, her folksy Alabama racism. 
when she Folksy said, uh, racism. Tulsi Gabbard is the diamond and silk of the left. She said that sentence verbatim. I can't take the woman who said it's a good thing slavery happened because at least they died with Jesus seriously. Yep. That was, uh, who, man, was that, like, 2013? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Blue Gal, dropping classics. All right, but yeah, so, yeah, this is them refereeing themselves. Which so many suffered, especially the Jewish people, to an electoral result in which you were the well-deserved winner. Oh. This is going to be a hard-fought, heated campaign of ideas. In the days and weeks and months ahead, I will strive to do a better job myself of elevating the political discussion. Congratulations, by the way, to you, Senator Sanders, and to your supporters on a tremendous win down in Nevada. Shut up. Uh He ended that real polite. Like they were like, just don't go off the cuff. (laughs) Someone in his ear was like, don't Biden this one. (laughs) He's not running for Senate? What? (laughs) (laughs) But the big one, and I know you were working on um the Am I the Asshole from Reddit segments. Oh, I was doing that, but I was also we were supposed to talk about the guy who got fired from the Bernie campaign. Oh fuck. Yeah. This uh, this Joy Ann Reed one is so long. Okay. Well let's yeah. try to make it fast. Oh shit. Oh well, I don't know. uh the guy that got fired. Oh, you wanna do the guy who got fired? Yes. Um Oh you oh and you have uh, you have background. <laughs> yes. Oh, and then there was also that whole Ava DuVernay thing. Ava DuVernay. Yes, I don't yes. know what you want to do. Um, yeah, you've got you've got me on the on the on the Twitter. I try to keep up. I really <laughs> I give it a go. I mean, you know, Twitter moves fast. Yeah, I, ch- I check my notifications and um, homie loco, like the, <laughs> who's the, the like the only person I interact with. Who Theo? To, yeah, it's just that's that's it. <laughs> it's just I'm just like ah Theo's there. Yeah. Um, oh, where the fuck is it? Phoenix Kalita, where the flunk is it? Yes. Um. So I actually disagreed with Kyle Kalinsky. All right. Yes. All right. So okay. So you you hate uh, secular talk. I hate secular talk. All right. You prefer oh. evangelical discussions. We got it. Here's yes. the framing. So um, there was a headline: Bernie staffer mocked Warren's looks, Pete's sexuality on private Twitter account. And it was, you know, one of those, like, expose articles. But, of course, it's also, like, fake outragey because, you know, yeah. it is. Um, but just, like, some of the tweets here. And I just want to know who leaked these because this account was shut down. So, I don't know. And also the people that, um, like, yeah, today they're going to say, <coughs> oh, we're against homophobia. Yeah. But it's like, oh, like, I seen you sharing the, um, the the Trump kissing Putin cartoon. Well, you saw the one that the Bloomberg campaign deleted. Oh, fuck. That Some was homophobic uh, shit. Yeah, so Team Bloomberg at Mike2020 on Twitter uh, tweeted out, I think yesterday, the day before, Vladimir Putin is willing to poison anyone who disagrees with him, but have you seen how that guy looks without a shirt? Mmm, delish. Hashtag Bernie. On despots. So it's like, that's... Why would you make a... Okay. They deleted it, but also, like, nigga, we see you. Yeah, wait, can, uh, w- one more time? What the hell? What the fuck is wrong with these niggas? Everything. <laughs> there you go. So this is uh, Team Bloomberg, Blue Check, um, replying to at Mike 2020. Oh, they're, uh, oh they're, they have a thread. All right. Mm. And so hashtag not hashtag but quote Vladimir Putin is willing to poison anyone who disagrees with him but have you seen how that guy looks without a shirt mmm delish hashtag Bernie on despots what is a despot like a dictator type of leader so if Bernie was in charge he'd be a dictator yeah that was like because he's a socialist you know well he's a communist actually I think these days so you'd be a gay dictator mm-hmm. and the gay part is very bad that's why that was like because you can't fit that much in a tweet you so, can't right so it's like when you say to somebody it's just a joke like well explain the punchline what is the punchline the punchline is him looking at a shirtless Vladimir Putin being sexually aroused yeah, that, so that's like, the punchline you, you didn't say he's a he's <laughs> a dictator and he likes to put Legos on the on the floor and take out light bulbs and laugh at everybody 
No. Which that sounds That's terrible. <laughs> Why would someone do that? Because they're a sadist. Yeah. God, that's that's what America is. Fucking Lego capitalism. Lego capitalism. Yeah. yeah so shit. they yeah they put that out and then of course they deleted it. So <clears throat> yeah. And they want you. They're making and making sure you know how bad gay is. Yes, gay is very bad. Um. All right. So anyway, so back to this actual story. Um, so this is the Bernie staffer who got fired. These are some of his tweets. Um, they took they took screenshots. Um, when Warren talks about how she knows she knows she's Native American because of her high cheekbones, where sis, another lie. You look like shit. Uh, Hillary Clinton should be permanently catapulted off the planet. I'm not even mad at that one. Uh, Amy Klobuchar's face looks like an optical illusion where it's an old lady, but also a young woman, depending on how you look at it. But with her, it's just two different old ladies. Yeah, it's <laughs> it, it sounds fucking like amateur four, hour 4chan dad jokes. Right, it is. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah, label it. I like mm. I like putting a fine point on things. Uh but a judge was called psychotic for deploying to Afghanistan and also said, never trust but a Buddha judge because he's combined the natural devious disposition of inherent Wait a minute. Never trust Buddha Judge because he combined the natural devious disposition inherent in gay men with a bloodthirsty careerist drive. Arguably kind of fucking homophobic. Jesus Christ, that was... No, nigga, you're... Uh, wait, nigga, you... You're fucking... Your anti-capitalism can't be rooted in homophobia. It's like... Yeah. Literally making a homophobic argument for class praxis? Fuck you. So he got fired uh, from the Bernie campaign. And I think all these tweets were from like November, October of last year, which I mean, I say last year. It wasn't that long ago. You know, that's the end of the fucking year. Um, yeah. And so then Kyle Galinsky, quote, tweeted some of these screenshots and said, so a guy working hard for the Bernie campaign had a private account where he made jokes about other candidates and shit posts. The media digs it up, writes a faux outrage article on it, and dude gets fired. I hate this shit. I feel terrible for Ben. The left needs a spine. See, like, and I don't know if he really means that or if he's doing <laughs> something that I hope niggas ain't doing again and um, faux, faux <laughs> outrage from the left. Because they know that they um, they, there's an emotional connection to their followers because they're sick and can't like right. We're the we're the poor people, so like <laughs> right. Like Kyle Kalinsky could be acting in bad faith. I don't, you know, off off the top of my head, I don't think he is, but I know that grifting exists and people will grift their own ar- audience they already have. Yeah. I watched Tariq Nashi do it over the past eighteen months. Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, the, that that shit's a bug out. Like, nigga, yeah, like I, you told me about this in the car on the way back from work, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, we actually sh- we don't talk like that off scratch. Like, right, we don't say all that misogynistic, homophobic mm-hmm. shit. That's right. Yeah, so Warren is an adult diaper fetishist at her core. Let's be honest, and it's like just fucking weird shit. Um. Let's auto let autocorrect finish the sentence for you. Elizabeth Warren has lied about being blank. He said for me, Elizabeth Warren has lied about being fat. Like it's just imagine having sex with a Warren gay like taking someone's virginity is kind of a big deal. A Warren gay? Yeah. There's a lot of like LGBTQ people support Warren. Yeah. Yeah, that that fuck that you can't hang with us. Yeah, like Mm-mm. get fired and get your ass kicked out the fucking door. Fuck you. You can't hang with us. Right. Not like that. Yeah, no, I don't think so at yeah, all. Yeah, we don't. And fuck so with some you. people were like really upset about this, and they're like, but the but you know like the center isn't even really mad. They're just doing it to get them fired because they're like fake outrage. And I'm like, so my response was, yeah, the article was fake outrage, and there's a lot of bad faith critiques, but. When you work for a campaign, you should never put things like this on your social media. He should have known his tweets would be used this way. Yeah. Like, like the right response. And, and this is what, man, can you get with your groups and get a talking point together? <coughs> we kicked him out because he failed our purity test. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Like, that's the deal. Yeah. You know what? This is what <coughs> having a pur- purity test actually is. Like when you heard um corporate dims like motherfucking uh, Bob Seska mm-hmm. punk ass mm-hmm. um, on that shit who was that nigga um, the, the, the comedy nigga that took the picture like pretending to fondle a woman Franken? while she was asleep Al Franken they're like no we can't let Franken go it's like 
Yeah, we can. We did. Yeah. Yeah, millennials got more of a say. <laughs> you know, and like people were arguing with me on my Twitter feed about it. And I'm like, I, you can argue all you want that these are bad faith critiques, but he still shouldn't have said that shit. And as somebody who's working for the campaign, should have fucking deleted it, deleted the accounts. You know, they have the thing where you can temporary, uh, temporarily shut it down. Should have fucking done that shit. Because again, what's the hashtag Bernie uses? Not me, us. Now the rest of us have to do work and explain that we're not all like this. We don't approve of this and take this fucking time to condemn shit that shouldn't have happened in the first fucking place instead of fucking working. So you're making us be ineffective. Like yeah. stop defending this shit. Just fucking stop it. And his name is Ben Mora. And yeah, a lot of uh, the fucking, the same people who... I see defended Alex Jones because freedom of speech are defending this guy under the guise of freedom of speech. And it's just like, go oh, fuck yourself. We don't need this guy. We don't need this attitude. Just let him be fired and move the fuck along. Yeah, there's, there's never the fucking um, freedom to respond to the speech. Oh, wait, no, that was actually one of the arguments in the Second <laughs> Amendment. <laughs> yeah, it was um, it, the, the language is um, very, very old school and legalese. But essentially, if a man offends you, you should be able to shoot him. <laughs> nice. That, that's very Americana. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that and just, you know, I I just I just can't get down with this idea that, you know, they're like, well, he was just shit posting. Or it wasn't a big deal. First of all, a lot of it was did come across as homophobic and misogynistic, like, first of all. But secondly, again, like you are working for the fucking campaign. Anything you do as an official campaign member will blow back onto the campaign. Like you should have fucking thought that shit through. Like. You want a grown-ass job of being in a grown-ass campaign doing grown-ass shit. Have your fucking Twitter be on some grown-ass shit, too. You can't fucking post shit like that. You're not just, like, some random guy on Twitter who's not affiliated. You just happen to be a fan of Bernie or a supporter of Bernie. You can get away with saying that shit then, maybe. I mean, you might still get pushback from people like me. But, you know, you're an official fucking campaign staffer. You can't fucking have that shit on your social media. What the fuck are you doing? And it's wild to me yeah. because, like, we've watched... In this era of social media, people get fired for less. What is it we say? Oh, look at this one racist thing this person said or this one sexist thing this person said. Here's their job. Call their job. We get niggas fired every fucking day on social media. Why did you think you were immune? Like, you're fucking arrogant and annoying. Fucking stop it. Yep. Like, I, I work in a factory and every time I see a Sunoco pallet, I think about the white dude that, um, that harassed a black person <laughs> trying to go to a pool. Oh, yeah. He got fired from Sunoco. Mm hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and that's like, um, and I know that <coughs> there's, uh, there are folks that follow the podcast and also follow the Facebooks. <laughs> that was the base of uh, pushing the podcast. And you may have noticed my personal Facebook feed is a wee bit tame, it's kind mm. of meme ish. Like every couple of months, uh, dear white people, this dorky celebrity versus this one right you know and then like a a, a wholesome <laughs> like pro bernie post right i figured <laughs> if i'm gonna make pro bernie posts mm -hmm. then like yeah like i'm not gonna end up being the screenshot that some uh some disingenuous motherfucker can go use yep yeah like i d basically don't be the screenshot every time you post think about how your screenshot will be used against you by people that you already know are disingenuous right. liars. Exactly. And so, yeah. And not just used against you, used against the rest of us too. Again, the hashtag is not me, us. So it's like now, you know, especially people of color who support Bernie, who are constantly being told they're like fake accounts or they're disingenuous or they're Bernie bros or whatever because Bernie bros are supposed to be white dudes. You're also making those people who already have to do extra work to be uh, seen as valid within this movement to do even more work to make up for your shit because they will, you know, liberals will gloss over, you know, a hundred black Bernie supporters to go to this one guy's fucking bullshit shit post tweets and be like, this is what Bernie bros are. And now you've done a disservice to those hundred black people they skipped over because we were trying to get our voices heard and explain why we support Bernie, why we're leftists, why we're progressives, all those type of things. And now we have to stop what we're doing to fucking deal with your shit because you can't handle your fucking social media. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Yeah, and just, um, and, that, and that's one of the things where it's like, um, we, we were riffing about this, but not on the program, just like us being a couple that live together. We talk. <laughs> and um, we're like, you know what? We say the words um, toxic masculinity, rape culture, patriarchy, mm -hmm. but we don't really say the word feminism or feminist. No, not really. Like, <laughs> we just... 
cover the stories Mm -hmm. and you know like uh, we say the things that like if somebody tunes in and they don't really know get get, get the ideas yeah Yeah. they'll get get the fucking ideas and yeah it's it's that kind of fucking program don't know what led to that tangent I don't know Bernie shit Bernie shit yeah and oh man probably still thinking about that um was the the guy with the picture the comedian The oh, Franken. Al Franken. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I guess uh, the last thing I'm just going to say is the whole fucking Ava DuVernay thing. I'm just going to watch it and see how it pans out. Apparently, she put out a tweet in 2012 that said, watching Harvey Weinstein sit in for Piers Morgan and interviewing Clinton. I've heard all the Harvey stories over the years, but still a fan. Ah, uh, fucking. Yeah. You know what I don't do? I don't go say, hey, man, we need to bring Louis C.K. back. I'm still, no, fuck that. Like, then where are these folks ideologically? But then are they just, I mean, how much did we learn from the Hillary campaign? Is it a public position and a private position? I mean, maybe. And, of course, people are trying to... um argue and say like well she would never openly admit to that you must be like not understanding it and it's like so what the fuck else would she mean like what stories would she be hearing but she's still a fan Uh, stories that harvey weinstein always takes the last piece of pizza that fucking fucker like is that it harvey weinstein always has cold beer I mean, are those the, the stories? We know the, what stories right, you're Right, because it about. says, but still a fan. Like, when you say, but still a fan, that means something is bad or problematic or wrong, but you're still a fan. That's what but still a fan means. So I don't fucking know. Yeah, you know, that, that exhibit's been ghostwriting all his verses. Oh, shit, Ava DuVernay blocked me. <laughs> I didn't even fucking at her. God damn. Um, just... See, that's that. See, and that's that fucking grimy shit. I'm not going to lie. Wait, is that like a connected corporate person? Ava DuVernay is a black director, black female director. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, Hollywood. Do yeah. we know what? Do we have any of their films? Did, did they do that? Oh, uh... fuck. I hope not. Oh, I damn. I think you... so. Huh, yeah, let's... Uh... All right, fuck it. It's Conversation Radio. The Phoenix and Which Williams also, show. mind you, she blocked me, and all I did was say, was that tweet real? And then put up a screenshot of the tweet. I didn't say any type of judgmental shit about it. I said, was this real? And she fucking blocked me. Huh. Um, let's see. She directed Selma, which we do not own. Hey, oh, she did the 13th. Um, a Wrinkle in Time and When They See Us. Um, something called Middle of Nowhere. Uh, this is the life. I don't know these. Some of these might be television programs. We yeah. don't. Yeah, we don't have anything. Okay, here we done. go. IMDb. Yeah, we don't have anything that she's done. Yeah, sure. We might. We might be big fans. We no, might be we're not. fucking huge fans. We might be like, man, I can't get enough of this. Uh, do 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 Vernesia, Invicticus, good hair. Wait, two thousand nine good hair documentary. Yep. We do. We have good hair. We have hair. good hair? Yeah. Oh. That Chris Rock shit? Yeah. Yep, we have it. See? I did not know that. Boom, I told you. We're, you Madagascar, too? Do you have that? <laughs> no, I don't have that. See, but we are big fans. Yeah? All right, well, apparently she blocks you if you ask if shit is real. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to have to explain that either. Hmm. All right. Yeah, still a fan of the of, of the wine. Yeah. All right. And didn't that nigga yeah. get convicted? Harvey White. Yeah, he got convicted yesterday. Yeah. And from what I heard, the, um, I think I was listening to Peter B. Collins said um, they fucking like took that nigga straight to jail. Mm-hmm. Like didn't even let, let the nigga like, you know, do rich white man shit for a minute. Nope. That's bugged out. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Oh, my God. Tariq Nasheed. Yeah. He's going to have fun with it. Because he, he, he's been predicting innocence the whole time, so is he even going to talk about it at all? Oh, he's not going to talk about the conviction. He's going to talk about Ava. Oh, we're, oh, ha, huh. he has a, he has a <laughs> red herring out of this fucking world. Yes, he does. Woo, yeah, all, the whole episode's just going to be about Negro bedwinches. Let's see if he already did one. This <sighs> is outstanding. Oh, Lord, and we were supposed to cover Joy and Reed. See what happens. Yeah, you see what happens. Oh. <sighs> I also see what happens. 
it's, you. Yes, I have my glasses on. <laughs> you see, the electrical tape holds the left arm of the glasses on. Mm-hmm. See, you didn't think of that one, did you? Really? <laughs> okay, let's see. You know he came in with the with the game family. Yeah, okay. Oh no, nothing new. Just um just uh the most recent transphobic episode, two hours of transphobia. Oh that's fun. Yeah, that's all he has up. That's what he that's that's what he's bringing to the table. Hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, I'll I'll look at t- Twitter then. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> oh, are you looking for screenshots? Yeah, just looking to see. How do you spell Weinstein? Is the I before the E or the flea before the fluble? W E. I N. I N. All right. Yeah, that's right, folks. I can't spell. Mm hmm. Um, oh, wait. I, I should probably go to latest. <laughs> I just saw something from 2019. <laughs> oh, he's very anti Bernie Sanders, I see. Who? Tariq. He quote tweeted somebody named yeah. the Black Authority that says, stop the DMs. I told you where this was going. The aid dunce leaders are now openly telling black folks we need to look to Sanders. Their crew, Killer Mike, Marianne Williamson, etc., are already on the team. It'll only get louder as the election gets closer. Wasn't these niggas saying to vote for Marianne Williamson because she had a reparations plan? Uh Oh, wait. Th- those guys, like, nah, Black Authority, that's uh, Jason Black. Nah, these cats are just, um, they're... They just say fully divest from politics. They have a libertarian mentality. Whatever. They're, yeah. They 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 function and think like a, like a 15-year-old that just read Ayn Rand. <coughs> um, oh, he did comment. You found it? No. Oh, uh, uh, let's, wh- wh- who that, commented where? What do you see? The one I'm looking at the same one as you right now. Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's be <laughs> clear. Weinstein was acquitted of the serious charges. He was found guilty of the lesser <laughs> charges. It says found guilty of rape. Yep. That's kind of a big charge. <laughs> so what does that tell me about what the fuck Tariq thinks about rape? Well, it tells you us a lot. Um, he was acquitted of predatory sexual assault. That sounds like a, is that not a serious charge? Well, that's the one he got acquitted of. He was found guilty of third-degree rape in the Jessica Mann case and guilty of first-degree criminal sexual assault in the case of Mimi Halei, uh, acquitting him of the two most serious counts of predatory sexual assault. Those two counts of predatory sexual assault, which carry a max sentence of life, would have required a 12-member jury. Oh, okay. So he got acquitted because in order to be found guilty, the prosecution would have to prove he physically attacked the Sopranos actresses. And that was a point of contention. Wow. Yeah. So basically, the jury is convinced that he sexually assaulted them. He's not. They're not convinced that he like got physically intimidating with them to do so. But he still has two fucking charges. So I mean, and he's in jail. Like- well, he did go to the hospital last night because he was having chest pains. I was hoping he was gonna Epstein it, but uh, oh, you know, he was gonna. <laughs> The, the fucking the, the last thing you see is an I'm with her bumper sticker <laughs> it's fucking over son you just killed yourself that's oh my that's god that's dark humor but you know what like I think the, the wine cellar is headed there not, and no not no chapo trappy shit oh god yeah nah we don't do it but I guess the wine cellar is already kind of dark humor it is it? dark humor yeah fuck it yeah we've been a Daria show um I just have to read this line. So his attorney, Weinstein's attorney, is named Arthur Idala, vowed to appeal, blasting the court for handling its ca- handling of the case from jury selection through the jury verdict. He also said Weinstein was, quote, unbelievably strong and took the decision like a man. What the fuck does that mean? Is everyone just talking like Trump now? I just, man. Okay, fuck it. Action-packed episode. Big closer. Big closer. We have a a long time ago. We had a Joydian slip. Joanne Reed. Yes. Got on in front of that camera and told the goddamn truth. <laughs> we do and, not uh, know who is going to. It pops up <coughs> once again, but not until after the white man says his piece. 
Now they're framing us around how how this uh, how Bernie is doing, or really what Bernie is doing to their Democratic Party. All right, but then he has to say his piece, and then Joy Ann Reed. Mm-hmm. I don't know who the fuck greenlit this segment. When is this um, from? Uh, in exactly six. Two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah. Okay. I just want to say days, but let me just say this about South okay. Carolina. Um, it, it, Corinne, Corinne said something really interesting about the, how socialism did not stick to. Uh, and folks, you're going to hear some air in that mix. That is MSNBC's mix. I don't know what the fuck's happening in their <laughs> studio. Barack Obama. You know why I didn't stick to Barack Obama? Because Barack Obama actually no one thought he was a socialist. Bernie Sanders thinks he's a socialist. All right. So the word socialist <laughs> didn't stick to Barack Obama because mm-hmm. he's not. Mm-hmm. Like, you notice how really? you go up to the average Republican right now, you ask them if Barack Obama's a socialist, they're like, fuck no, I saw the light. And, you know, I, I saw the quantitative easing thing, and I was like, god damn, I can't stand this fucking Barry guy. It's not just racism anymore. <laughs> uh-huh. But he's actually a capitalist, and I'm not feeling it. They wanted him to be a socialist. So, that, so it didn't stick to Obama. But Bernie thinks he's a socialist. He does. This is a trip. You know why I didn't stick to Barack Obama? Because Barack Obama actually no one thought he was a socialist. Bernie Sanders yeah, he bailed off the thinks bank. he's why a socialist. Fucking, no one on the left thought he was a fucking socialist. And no Democrats either. That's why they endorsed him. Mm. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. All right. He thinks he's a socialist and he is a socialist. He's I a like very <laughs> intersection. He's an intersectional Jew. It's a very complicated thing. Oh, man. Intersocial? I don't know. We're going to figure this thing out. That I'm not I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. What I'm saying is Really? But you had to lean in on it first. Uh-huh. Not saying it's good or bad, but just make sure that it just needs to be said. I think, I, my, I think my listeners are too stupid to understand tonal inflection is what he actually just said. It is uh MSNBC viewers. It is, it is. Well Which is podcasters that need segments, so maybe we're not we're not that that wise. <laughs> This is a different game here. We are playing the idea that Bernie Sanders, who's polling second here right now behind Joe Biden, uh, although only by five points, is, is, is surging like that. That tells you something about the changing electorate here in South Carolina. What happens, to answer your question, what happens with that disparate vote between everybody else and Joe Biden? I don't know. Um, I've always said that this state okay. um, has 60 percent, over 60 percent um, uh, of the of the Democratic primary. So he's talking about the vote being split because there's so many moderates. All right. And now that could lead to something. Whoopsie doos. Really? Bernie Sanders. Oh, I accidentally clicked it all the way. That doesn't mean Joe Biden's going to get. So um, I've always said that this state. Um, has 60 percent, over 60 percent um, uh, of the of the Democratic primary electorate is black, and so they mm-hmm. control who wins this state. Yeah. That doesn't mean Joe like Biden's the- going to get 60 percent. They always be saying they when they talk about the black voters like they're all a fucking team. We are all a team. We all are a monolith, actually. Like, didn't Trump get an increased amount of the cis black male vote? I mean, yeah, but it was still a super minority overall. Yeah, like infinitesimal in general, yeah. but it it was it was an increase. Yeah. And th- like, yeah, th- like he says they like it's the fucking corporate black establishment <laughs> of fucking think, Wakanda billionaires. Because I think fucking all dem- all black Democrats are like 60 year old church ladies. Yeah. Like they really fucking do. No, it's the people that aren't getting Social Security. You need to be looking at them and what they're looking at. Of the black uh, uh, of, of, the, of the caucus go, I mean, the primary goers here in South Carolina. He won't. That vote's going to be split out. But it's not going to be split out. I love how they people. speak with such arrogance when they've been wrong for the last four fucking years. What? Hillary's gonna win. Bernie Sanders' campaign has no stamina. Bernie's not going to do well this time around. Yeah, that wasn't the MSNBC. Pete's gonna host. be number one. Oh. Biden's gonna be number one. That wasn't MSNBC. Bernie's going to win Iowa. Sanders is going to, uh, uh, Warren is going to win Iowa. None of the hosts said anything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Those were all, those were Russian interference modules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to start using the word modules. <clears throat> okay. Because we don't respect our audience. I think I could <laughs> see them doing that. You know, if we just say Russian modules, 
Oh my goodness! I kind of want him to do it to see if like Donut fucking, Twitter uh, picks that up. It's like, like fucking um, Cat Williams with ins- insurgents. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen no surgeons. It's going to be split out amongst three people at most, and so I think coming out of Iowa, New Hampshire, and now Nevada, Bernie is. I will agree with you. He is definitely making a footprint, and it is. And, and people are waking up to that. Does he win South Carolina? Can he surge enough to win? I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. Back to my original point. All right. Now, and no, notice how much fucking, like, camera and microphone time he has taken up. Yep. And, like, when you go out to the wide shot, we'll see who the other people are that aren't getting to speak. And this is MSNBC, the identity politics station right now. The saddest part is that he looks like a fucking uh, off-season Santa Claus. And, like, I want Santa <laughs> Claus to be a socialist. He does. He's kind of pudgy. He's got like the <laughs> like the double chin. He's got the white beard. He's got the round glasses. He looks like fucking off-season Santa Claus. I want Santa Claus to be a socialist. Presents for everyone. And by presents, I mean Medicare. No, no, we'll get you some presents. I'm just going to go whip the shit out these elves and make them <laughs> put them fucking iPods together. <laughs> I mean... But Bernie Sanders is an actual socialist, a democratic socialist. That does not play well here. People don't like it. And guess what? You love that tone, right? Mm -hmm. That, like, hand clap emojis all day. Yeah, but he's more like your angry father. Or, like, granddad. Like, you will go to church on Sunday. Don't disappoint your mother. That's what he sounds like. Or for me, just being a grown-ass black adult and coming across one of these fucking these boomer ass <laughs> white people from the suburbs is just like no I don't watch this no is a whole sentence no <laughs> oh my god the fucking guy at Walmart that you wouldn't help no oh my god <laughs> oh that was great where else they don't like it they don't like it in the super uh, super Tuesday states that's a dirty word in this country and if you don't believe me look at the latest polling something like 61 uh, percent hmm the latest polling said most millennials think socialism ain't so bad. And uh, no, he didn't say. Wait, oh, 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 let's see if he did. He said latest polling. Let's hear it. What 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 the source of the polling is? Dirty word in this country. And if you don't believe me, look at the latest polling. Something like sixty one percent of Americans won't vote for you if you're quote a socialist. So come to South Carolina, and we're going to show you. See? Wait, Americans. So the, that includes Republicans. The uh, American polling station. The American polling station. Yeah, um, um, where they poll Americans. If you're an American, you've been polled. You got. You were in this poll. I was not in this poll. I was in the poll. I don't know. They missed you. Maybe you're. Maybe you're not a real American. Hmm. Maybe you hate America. Maybe you have strong critiques. Maybe you think America's some sort of stolen land Maybe. where they just where everybody's just dancing on the graves of indigenous people, but they're shallow graves because they were murdered while Europeans were manifesting their destiny. Yes. I'm pretty sure that that's what you think America is. That is what I think America is. <sighs> uh, according America. to Gallup polls, um, 51% of Americans, U.S. adults, say socialism would be bad and 43% believe it would be good. Wait, but what? that's not broken down by political party. So, oh. <laughs> when we and say forty three percent, like how many of them are Democrats and then or also, independents? Who the fuck was polled? Don't know, but they have here between uh, nineteen forty two to twenty nineteen. Uh, in nineteen forty two, only twenty five percent of people said it was a good thing, and thirty four percent of people had no opinion. In twenty nineteen, forty three percent of people said it's a good thing, and only six percent of people have no opinion. I think things may have shifted ever so slightly. Right? And then part of it, like, some intellectual folks, not like me, like the the fancy book learning folk, they, they'll be like, um, like, in inadvertently, it's a side effect of socialist policies. Right. That you got these boomers that really think they just fucking, they, they have grit and they earned it. Yep. They have no idea that socialist policy, because they... Because when it's policy, it's invisible. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's policy that benefits you because you're just like, hey, another good day. Exactly. These exactly. just keep happening. My blessings just keep adding up. Yeah, when you have bad days, you're, you, now it's time to investigate fucking yeah. why. <laughs> so, yeah, they mm-hmm. literally don't know that they're just kicking it on the fucking high hog of socialism. Yep. And, and hating it. Or so they think. 
Oh, yeah. We're probably not going to vote for a socialist. It doesn't mean he's not going to be our nominee. And let me just say this as well. Barack Obama and George Bush, and this is going to be very controversial, allowed both of the major political parties in this country to become fringe, fringe parties. That's what's happened here. Don All right. Barack Obama allowed it. Yep. And George Bush. George, you see how George Bush allowed that? Yes. Axis of evil. All right. Do you allow? All right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump took the Republicans and made them a fringe party. And if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, it will make the Democrats a fringe party. That's right. Fucking good. But keep keep in mind, Donald Trump made it a fringe party. Yes. Don't you worry about that whole Tea Party thing. Don't worry about that. Or that uh, that Newt Gingrich time in 94. Just fucking don't. Fucking Rush Limbaugh's entire career. Oh, man. I was thinking about, like, what it's got to be like to be, like, a cat like Peter B. Collins that's, you know, like, he's, like, retirement age or even mm -hmm. past it. Mm -hmm. Like, he's actually talking about this is the last year of him doing a daily podcast. It's really? over. Okay. Um, Nicole Sandler, she's uh, getting getting into <clears throat> her 50s, hanging out up there in that age. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, almost the whole time this fucking Rush Limbaugh fuck mm -hmm. has been there. And just syndicated all over the damn place. Yes. Some of these old hosts that I mentioned, like, they've done well. Yeah. You know, but not Rush Limbaugh well. And they, it's like fucking... It's like having one mumble rapper that's just been here since the 80s. Yeah. And he just keeps dropping hits. And here you are, you're dropping the fucking, I'm the lyrical, instant, radical, splatter you, and bust your clavicle. And then here comes Rush Limbaugh. She's a slut, right? That makes her a slut. <laughs> if, she, if she uses birth control, that's what sluts do. Yep. And goes platinum. Yep. Triple platinum. Yep. You got 500 YouTube views and 10 <laughs> Patreon subscribers. I mean, honestly, though. <laughs> that's that bullshit. And there is no left version of that. We need a left version of that. Oh, my God. Which also, God. like, I'm very excited for, like, this whole, like, these comparisons to, like, the left is being, like, the Tea Party. I'm very excited for that. Like, we, yeah, let's make our own fucking party. Let's make our own fucking group and take the fuck over. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm down. I just don't know what to call it. <laughs> yeah. Antifa. Antifa. Uh, that, that name has too much modern day current baggage. Yes. Jesus Christ. Donald Trump took the Republicans and made them a fringe party. And if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, it will make the Democrats a fringe party. And what will happen with everybody else in the rest of the country? Yeah, because you know Go how... Go fuck yourself. That's what's going to happen. Go fuck yourself. He's saying it'll just instantly make them a fringe party. Like, just all of a sudden, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is going to mm -hmm. be like, oh, that's it. We're seizing the means. Well, guess uh, what? The moderates can make their own party. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know what to call it. The moderate party. Damn. The the, the status quo is actually okay with me party. <laughs> uh, uh, huh. Call them Krispy Kreme. Krispy Something Kreme. donut related. You know, mm. don't 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 hit it on the with, with the word donut. Mm -hmm. You know, but we know. We know. You know, call them the uh, the 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 dozen airs. Whatever. Figure something out. Yeah. They're all going to look around and go, what the hell about us? Where are we supposed to go? And so I would like to say to our current Democratic leaders in the country, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and anyone Barack else. Barack Obama's Mr. not Clyburn's in fucking office. He's on retirement and posting his book lists of his favorite books to read and his workout playlist. What the fuck are you talking about? And he's also mentioning coming out against Bernie in meetings. <laughs> yeah, in meetings, but he's not going to. I mean, if I got to take down an old comrade. Because remember, at, remember <laughs> he called Bernie a comrade on stage and said he was disappointed with Bernie disapp uh, distancing himself from he him. Is, he like, is. maybe Obama is holding a fucking grudge. Maybe he had a true friend. Remember the right wing was running with no, that? Obama didn't. was running with socialists and communists in college? No. Maybe he met Bernie and was Harry like, this Reed is the very uncle I wish I had. said they were not friends. No man, I think uh, I think I think Obama's he's he's got a bit of the uh, the stire in him. I don't think so. Yeah, like that's probably I bet his workout playlist has Cardi B in it. 
Uh huh. Why does it have Cardi B in it? Well, G. Willy Walliker Bonkers. G. Willy Walliker. Did we even get to Joanne <laughs> Reed yet? Oh my no. god. No, we didn't. Oh, all right. He's going to announce his uh, his endorsement on Wednesday. It's time for y'all to speak up. It's time for our leaders that we've elected over and over again that are the 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 the, the, the thirty thousand foot leaders of the Democratic Party. We've elected Hillary Clinton over and over again. We have. <laughs> Oh, he really said her name and then said over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's like, and I get like, he's talking really fast and maybe he, he could have said Diane Feinstein, like throw in another name because he probably thought of those other people. But you just said a guy who got elected to Senate, then president, and then a person that got elected to Senate. And then you just said over and over again. speak up because if you don't speak up now then we're going to have bernie sanders and yeah when they pan out from this guy who's taking up all this mic time mm -hmm. well so far this is what three minutes and 55 seconds of a six minute 30 second clip <laughs> so he's four out of six minutes well he can speak for um he's one white man out of four black women joanne reads there i don't know these new folks these are new i haven't watched msnbc since um about, like, as far as regularly, <laughs> like 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's a black woman about about my complexion, mm -hmm. uh, another relatively dark-skinned black woman, and a, I don't know, looks white. I'm going to say racially ambiguous on that one. Maybe she looks like Latina to me. I don't know who that is, though. Okay. And uh, But he needs this mic time. As our nominee, and that is a disaster for the country, a major disaster for the country and it will and, and the infighting that's happening within this family right now the democratic family is going to get worse and worse and worse the reckoning is is coming and it's time for our former party leaders who are the titular leaders so of our party so just give us what the fuck we want we want health care and living wages nigga come the fuck on with it now you see how he said all that shit and because you got a little louder when you responded to all that bullshit now you're just screaming on t everyone's screaming <laughs> at each other. Everyone's Lots so mean. Why are Bernie for so divisive? Firing squad. Divisive. <laughs> no, it's divisive. It's divisive. See, and then we're there. <laughs> oh man, I forgot who I was listening to um at, at work today. Uh, but somebody <laughs> said that they jokingly started doing it, but now they do it too much, mm -hmm. is they say vase as vase because Bloomberg is in the race now. And it's like, that's how I like to say it. But yeah, so let's, uh, so now we're, we're headed toward the end of, um, of his segment mm -hmm. where he had um, his backup dancers, <laughs> I guess. And, uh, and we're gonna get into the Joydian slip where it's the kind of thing, I think I made a Facebook post, so I was just like, who greenlit that shit? Mm -hmm. Speak up and speak out and start endorsing. They got to do it now. <laughs> so, so, so I well, I'm going to give myself the last <laughs> word. Well, we're out of time. We're out of time. We're out of time. And now, as a as a feminine person, yes. What are their laugh? Oh, Cause all, everyone who got talked over is now laughing while Joanne Reed says, I'm gonna give myself the last word. What, what are their laughs communicating? Those are the uncomfortable, awkward, like I don't like what just happened. So I'm going to uh, attempt to laugh while I try to defuse this situation. Cause what the fuck am I guy? Actually, what? where I have it paused <laughs> folks, as I'm recording this, yo, when this podcast gets out, go look on my Facebook. I'm posting a <coughs> screenshot of this because the, literally in this moment where I paused it, uh, Joanne Reed is smiling and it looks like one of her eyes is blinking just in time. So it looks like she's winking, <laughs> which I know is not on purpose, but it's funny to me. And then all the people, all the, all the women fake laughing because this bullshit, they all have their eyes closed and teeth showing laughing at the same time mm -hmm. while the white man is open mouth laughing with his head tilted back. <laughs> this is fucking, here's your MSNBC, here's your Democrats. Oh man, this is, this is a great moment. <laughs> and just what the fuck your party really is. Right? 
But I thought they were like intersectional and stuff. Ah, now the uh, the Joydian slip comes among us. Yes. Joy save, blam. Mm -hmm. All right, so, all right, she's got to give herself the last word, yes. and uh, none of y'all gets to says nothings. Oh, no. We're out of time. We're going to have everybody back. We're out of time. But I, I'm going to give myself oh. the last word. Here Did you see the dark skinned black woman? She just threw up her hands with that exasperation. And even that looked like, um, I don't know. Do you see something I, I see in that? Um, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm probably reading too much into it. I think about patriarchy so much that I might start getting kind of Alex Jonesy with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she threw her hands up with the back of her hand showing. Yeah. Which still looks like some damn near like you're praying to Allah submissive shit. No. Like it's like it's, it's um. Like it could be socialized. Like I'm still being non-threatening, but I am raising my hands. But I'm being non-threatening. No, that's just like a sign of exasperation. Of just like a. Here we are again. Great. Yeah. I don't know why I did my hair and put up on makeup for this. Just to get <laughs> talked over by a white guy for six fucking minutes. <laughs> but I better laugh and you know. <laughs> hey, have a great day. It's it's that. It's I I can sense the exasperation. Imagine where this segment would have gone if you weren't here for that nuance. <sighs> this would have been one of those ones where it's fucking it's three thirty a.m. and it's like I'm trying not to yell. Phoenix is sleeping, but this bullshit. <laughs> Uh huh. Say back. I don't know. I'm not going to claim everybody else's age. You know, we don't talk about people's age on television, but I'm Generation X. And we thought, you know, we have, we, hip hop was invented yeah. in my generation. Well, all right. Just get, you know, just let it go. Let yeah. it go. And, you know, and I had a really hard time trying to convince my kids that hip hop from their generation was better than mine. I know it's really not, but in their mind, it is. And now there are more of them than there are of us. There are you more of the them yeah. than there are of you, my parents' you, you uh, generation. Yeah. There are, are more they of, buy? hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Here's the thing. They haven't up until now, but this the, the country is being turned over to this younger generation. Yeah. And younger people, whether they are people of color or whether they are young white people, are angry. Okay. They are yep. angry because they are broke. They are angry Green. because when I was my daughter. Who the fuck greenlit this segment? I don't know, but I see it that dark-skinned black woman in the corner like, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's making that yes face. Yeah, it keeps going. Daughter's yep. age, I could live by myself in an apartment. I didn't need mm -hmm. six roommates. They're oh, angry because the white they man can't find nodding. jobs to pay them a decent wage. They can't afford health care. If they're not on our, on our their parents, their Gen X parents' health care, they have no health care. They're angry because they can't afford their uh, insulin pens. These are, this is a generation that right. feels left behind economically. Yep. And then they see billionaires not Agreed. paying taxes. We think they're not gonna vote. We think they won't vote for a socialist. They don't care That's about right. socialism. They didn't grow up hiding, hiding under the, um, the, you know, the desk at school. I'm just the white now. I, now I want to know if it's gonna be misogynistic that this white man is cutting off this black woman, talking about populism, and raising his finger. Well, is he Bernie? Yes. He doesn't sound like a New Yorker. He seems like a rough and tumble. A relatively gruff individual. This nigga drink mint juleps on the porch. Uh, mint yeah. juleps out of, out of a plastic cup. Yeah. That's not rough and tumble. Socialism. They didn't grow up hiding hiding Joy. under the um the, you know the desk at school. I'm just saying. I'm giving myself the last word. I'm just saying, Jimmy. Yeah. We don't know who they'll we vote don't for. Know. You're right. And so I we think that know. if we You're if right. we go in, in with despair. If we go in with despair, don't have an election and keep Donald Trump in there. Because at the end of the day, whether you want Bernie Sanders or not, you might yeah. get him. And if you and get him, you're right. going to have to get in your mind right with the idea that this Democratic Socialist is who you got. And it's him or Trump. It's a binary election when it comes to November. So I'm going to give myself the last word just on that. <laughs> Nigga. And he won't stop fucking talking. Who the fuck let Joanne Reed say that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oh, shit. Because this was, what, two days ago, you said? Yeah. Yesterday, on Vanity Fair, there was an article published uh, that says, Phil is doing his best to give Bernie his due. After a Sanders surge and a Matthews gaffe, MSNBC prepares, prepares to pivot. Mm. With Bernie rally coverage, Bernie-friendly guests, and a mandate to seek out, quote, more smart pro-Sanders voices, the cable net confronts a new, uh, new reality. He is winning, says a source. 
The pundit apocalypse has been gestating for a few weeks, but it took the shockwaves from Bernie Sanders' Nevada victory to fully set it off. As Sanders numbers were made, uh, as, as Sanders numbers were building in the caucuses, Chris Matthews made the following comparison during an analytical exchange with his colleague Brian Williams. I was reading last night about the fall of France in the summer of 1940, and the general Reynaud calls up Churchill and says it's over. And Churchill says, "How can it be? You've got the greatest army in Europe. How can it be over?" Uh, and then, of course, the blowback was swift. Never thought part of my job would be pleading with a national news network to stop likening the campaign of a Jewish presidential candidate whose family was wiped out by Nazis to the Third Reich, tweeted Sanders, Sanders Communications Director Mike Casca. But here we are. By Monday morning, Matthews was facing calls for his head on a platter with hashtag fire Chris Matthews gaining steam. Uh, as far as the possibility of Matthews resigning or being booted, that's not happening. They're not taking Matthews off the air over this, one network insider told me. Rather, sources say he will address the controversy Monday night on the installment of Hardball, which we already did. Mm -hmm. Several of them also emphasized Matthews was not actually likening Sanders to Nazis. He frequently tosses <clears throat> out historical and World War II references, and this one was perhaps just a tone-deaf analogy in the heat of the moment. But if nothing else, the backlash seemed to crystallize just how hot the Sanders MSNBC dynamic has become. Yeah. So, uh, who are they talking to? Does it say Phil Griffin, MSNBC president, uh, said in a green room before the NBC debate in Nevada, uh, he was asked, Phil, your network has not been playing a fair role in this campaign. I'm upset. Is anything going to change? Griffin, according to sources, is taking complaints seriously. After Matthew's comments Saturday night, Griffin's phone blew up with an angry reaction from the campaign. Griffin discussed the matter with Matthews, who then interviewed campaign co-chair Nina Turner on air minutes later. Hmm. Sources also noted MSNBC took Sanders' uh, El Paso and San Antonio rallies live on Saturday and that Sanders' people like campaign manager Fa uh, Faiz Sha uh, Shakir and a former campaign manager Jeff Weaver both received airtime on Monday. Yeah. More and more Bernie stuff because of this shit. So, yeah, that's who greenlit it, the president of MSNBC. Shit. <clears throat> yeah. Because Bernie keeps winning and they don't know what to do. Nothing's worked so far. Uh-huh. Because it was... That that was an unreal fucking segment. Yeah. And it's like... It's almost like it was set up on purpose. <clears throat> so it could be like fucking... Like they could make her a Bernie bro? I don't know. I don't know. And she well, you know what? Their thing is going to be probably like not a Bernie bro, but just like it's more important to get Trump out. Mm. And it's a binary choice because she damn near sounded like me. Like, nigga, it's this or that. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that that segment. Uh, it will live on. And I'm probably going to need to post the link to folks because um, I did just make the post <laughs> without making the link. Mm. So I just have the question out there vaguely and loudly. Like I actually used exclamation marks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, there you go. If uh, if you want more exclamation marks, you know, sign up for patreon.com slash wine cellar media fund. And uh, we have a... Not very, very little just exclusive content. More so what we'll do is uh, do Patreon early access. Like when Phoenix Cool Leader does a swap cast for SWOP Sex Workers Outreach Project. Um, an episode of that will be up on Patreon three days before it hits the socialized feed. Mm -hmm. And so it will get socialized. So folks who sign up for Patreon are paying a tax by choice so that the program can exist for other folks. Yes. And then there's uh, paypal.me slash phoenixandwilliam, paypal.me slash phoenixandwilliam. Uh, if you want to just throw a tip, uh, we like getting broccoli and uh, beans. I, I like, Phoenix doesn't like beans. I don't like beans. But fucking, uh, you get uh, corn tortillas. Yes, corn uh, tortillas, some chicken. Yeah, we eat yeah. the food. Mm -hmm. And um, Cash App, Phoenix Kaliter uses a dollar sign, mm -hmm. Phoenix Kaliter, yes. all one word. Yes. It's how you use the cash application. Correct. And, uh, yeah, winesellermedia.com, 7.22 p.m. I am on <coughs> in the factory at 4 in the 30 a.m. And then I go on to a day where I think I'm going to be walking up and down a about three-step staircase and opening bags of cookies and putting them into a, uh, a packaging system. Hmm. All right, so uh, low-tech day. 
Or at least that's what's on the schedule. It could change up because I do need to let the maintenance department know that the project from Monday is like super not done. Oh. Uh, yeah, because the uh, sanitation department pulled us away from it. Well, they pulled me away first and then the second cat about an hour later. And so there's like electrical components that are just disassembled and exposed and like on the floor. Hmm. <laughs> Bad. Maybe we should go do something about it. Hmm. So uh, who knows where my fucking day will go, but so far it's looking pretty low tech. All right. Uh, I keep tr- I keep going to hit the recording program so I can hit stop and I keep hitting uh, fucking Google Chrome instead. Oh. All right. A fucking hour and 10 minutes again. I, I'm, I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and bust about 45 minutes real quick here. Right. All right. All right. Thanks for uh, checking out the whole shit. WineCellarMedia. Dot. Fucking calm. Bye. Oh yeah, please be as safe as possible wherever you are. <laughs>